Are we in a good spot? Can we hear Julia? Oh, and we got it. Okay, I got to get it. Oh, you got it. Okay. So, so <laughs> we're we we'll be already free. Are we good? So, all right. Hello, everybody who is at the History of Diving Museum located at mile marker 83 in Isla Morada. Hello to you who is um, attending by Zoom. We are recording this so that we can put it on our YouTube channel. So if somebody couldn't be here or couldn't uh, participate uh, tonight, it'll be on our YouTube channel tomorrow. If you have any comments, go ahead and put it in the YouTube channel. Or if you're watching online, go ahead and put in the chat where you're from, how many are with you. And if you have any questions along the way, Julia will be monitoring and uh, we'll be feeding those yeah, to perfect. us later on. So my name is Lisa Mangili. Again, I'd like to welcome you. We've got a lot going on at the History of Diving Museum. We've got some upcoming events. I encourage you to go on our website, divingmuseum.org and check out Earth Day. Uh, we've got a Vintage Dive Day. We've got a Deadhead Tribute Concert. It's gonna be happening on March 31st. So a lot of things, divingmuseum.org. I would like to thank our members that are here tonight. Thank you very much. Some of our volunteers are here tonight. Thank you very much. Our sponsor tonight is Dutton Law Group. Uh, Chris Dutton happens to be on our board, but Dutton Law Group is located all around the state and um, they're a great resource if anybody should be needing an attorney. So thank you for supporting the History of Diving Museum. Next month, we have a speaker coming in and he's gonna be talking about uh, crocodiles. So we're gonna be learning a lot about that. A lot of it goes with our Dive Into Art Edge of the Sea exhibit that will be open till April uh, 19th. So we encourage you to come to the museum. If you didn't get a chance to come early tonight and walk through, come back. We're open seven days a week, 10 to five. Check it out. We've got 11 different schools plus the Art Guild of the Purple Isles have got things on display. So all that stuff is happening. But tonight we have Chris and Chris is a part of the Seems some people that are here are familiar with Chris and have been on his tours in some of the local parks. But tonight you're going to talk to us about the local parks as well as if something happens, how do I survive in that setting? Oh, yeah. Okay. So thank you very much for being here. We look forward to learning more. Well, I'm just invited. Thank you, everyone, for coming out, joining, and watching later. I appreciate it. Uh, so I'm Chris. Or Ranger Chris would want to be an official, but I like yeah, yeah, I'm And uh, yeah, today we're going to talk a little bit about well, my awesome parks, our awesome parks, because they're available for the public to use. And then uh, we'll talk about some of our uh, plants we have, and how to use them in a survival situation. But you guys better take a step back. We, you know, the disclaimer when you see the medicine, uh, uh, please don't use these in a uh, emergency situation to ask your doctor or your uh, lawyer and anything like that. Uh, just because. <laughs> You have to remember that there's certain things people can eat and try, and uh, you, I might be okay, but uh, make sure you do ask, uh, or if you're under 18, ask your mom or dad before, or your parent or guardian before you uh, try anything crazy out there in the, uh, uh, in the hammocks. Okay. I do want to also uh, preface this with, uh, if you do have a question through the uh, event, go ahead and just give it to us if it's a real uh, uh, in-depth or um, Eric actually had an awesome question already. He asked, what percentage of the uh, plants in the Keys are native? And I said, oh, Eric, that's a great question. I'm not sure, but we wrote that one down. I'll talk to the uh, biologist on our team, and I'll be able to uh, shoot him an answer for that. I can answer because I don't know. I'll make sure that y'all know I do not. And we'll write down your email. We'll get you that answer. Uh, but yes, uh, well, let's, let's jump in. So today, talk about some different plants we can use, some different native plants we can use for survival. And, and you know, it kind of links in with some of the uh, uh, the different uh, plants we have in the Edge of the Sea exhibit in uh, the Dive Museum. I was able to check that out. Very cool. Okay. Very cool artwork, too. Excuse me. Yeah, no worries, guys. I'm uh, here. I'm sure you're coming up. There we go. Okay, we'll put your husband right next to you. Great, because he doesn't get to it all. 
Uh, I, I should I should warn. So the front two rows, that is the splash zone. When I when I whip out the uh, some of the exhibits. So please, I hope you, don't, you didn't wear anything that you really like. Uh, I'm not the kidding, but there will be a little splashing, but not on purpose. <laughs> Okay, so just a little introduction. I am a park ranger at four uh, state parks uh, around. And yes, either, let's see, I talk about some of our events we've had. So that's when the key, <laughs> before the sign was destroyed. Uh, um, uh, this was at Truck or Treat. I'm giving out some candy to uh, Founders Park. Uh, this is one of our cleanups that we did out on Lignavite Key. So for the uh, cleanup on the eight on the eighteenth in two days from now, uh, that's uh, that's the love. Oh man, we had a we had quite a bit of the trash. I can't remember the exact weight, but that's where we're trying to be on the eighteenth. And uh, I pitched it earlier, but uh, for our guests who haven't been to Lignavite Key yet, uh, we do have a, a trash cleanup on the eighteenth. But it coincides with the garden, uh, with the garden tour Saturday as well. So I understand this one. There's some competing priorities. That was, that was a good point. Uh, we'll have a cleanup either at Indian Key or Lake Navite Key uh, the third Saturday of March and uh, April as well. So if you're like, oh, you know, I'm pretty interested, you can join our Facebook group, Friends of the Al Friends of the Ivanrata Area State Parks, and uh, you can get updates for information. And also, Rosie, so Rosie said, hey, how do I find out about these cool events? Well, if you're friends with our Facebook group, Friends of the Alamed Area State Parks, you can learn about these awesome events. And uh, I didn't know everybody was coming today, but some of, some of the people you might recognize because they're in the community. They come up to our parks. Oh, let me see. Oh, man. Uh, that's fun. Oh, and that's Oyster. <laughs> I like him. And that's funny. I want it. Joanne's there. Some of y'all might recognize Joanne too. Hello. Oh, okay. Okay, well. She, 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 she does quite a few uh, canvas for the boats around. So you might see her installing uh, some canvases. Okay. I don't care the way, but yeah, awesome people. Uh, we'll jump in. Okay. So, survival, native plants, man, how to tie together. Well, it ties together because if you are on a boat or if you're skydiving, uh, I skydived last week. It was pretty terrifying uh, the first time, and did, I didn't like it, but my cousin, she had a great time. She talked me into it. and. My heart's still just like screaming, just thinking about it. Um, but, you know, we made a joke of what happened if we got blown off course? I said, man, I don't know, but uh, it didn't happen, thank, thank goodness. But if you're in the water, uh, oh, I got one. Uh, this is probably before most of y'all's times, but uh, uh, Gilligan's Island. Are y'all familiar? Of course. Okay, you're being polite. Let's see, I, I'll skip forward a little bit. Uh, uh, Survivor. What, what, uh, Boston Rob and Amber. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we connect with everybody here. So the Hunger Games, you know, you, you're team love angst, you know, you're in a fight situation. You want to know what plant you can use to survive. That's what we're going to be talking about today. So for the mangroves. So the red mangrove, that's usually the first one you'll see when you come to the island. Uh, the walking roots. Are you familiar with the red mangroves? It, 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 uh, if you're trimming them back, it really stains your boat because of the tannins in there. Uh, the tannins were actually utilized by uh, quite a few of the early settlers and uh, some of our native uh, people as well. Uh, they would use that to tan their buckskins. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I think in Mexico, they still use it to get that real nice red color, but uh, I don't think we use it. I don't think, oh, no, we do not use red mangrove in, uh, in America to uh, tan, our, tan our items. And uh, they also make a really delightful uh, tea. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if you know. The dried leaves 
were uh, utilized by uh, the Seminoles. Sometimes when I uh, we say groups of different tribes were using the name that we're referring to them as, uh, maybe not their uh, uh, proper name. So I do want to say I'm referring to a group of uh, people that were in the Everglades and that were pushed down for uh, some different reasons, uh, not, not the best of, of them. Uh, but uh, a red mangrove uh, leaves were actually dried and used as a, a tea. And they're actually used to mix with tobacco with a uh, mulberry leaf to uh, extend the uh, tobacco. Now, no, I have not smoked any um, red mangrove leaves, um, but that was the use of them. And if you're on the island and you're getting a little bit, um, what did they say? You know, you, you, you need something to smoke because you're getting a little bit, you know, concerned or getting a little bit anxiety ridden. You have that option. Um, and then the, uh, Let's see, the uh, seedling or the uh, young red mangrove. Uh, if you cut it open, it actually has a, a, a quite a, a starchy middle. And um, oh, I can see. so imagine a very starchy uh, middle in this uh, seedling. And that can be boiled and, and eaten. Ooh, uh, uh, however, uh, some foods, just because they're edible, uh, I usually refer to them as like famine foods. Because man, they're rough. Uh, um, and the red mangrove uh, starch is one of them. Uh, you have to be pretty hungry to uh, to eat on that one. But yeah, it's, it's kind of fun. Does it have to be cooked? Uh, yes. It. Hmm. I don't know if it has to be cooked, so I would take a stand back. Uh, 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 but uh, uh, it's encouraged that it's cooked, and I don't know what would happen if you didn't eat it cooked. Um, because eating it cooked was still uh, still rough. Did you yeah. Do it? Oh, of course. So. Everything I'm going to talk to you about today that I see that I say you can eat, I've ate it, or if I didn't eat it, I would make sure I made that very clear because I don't want to, I'm not going to tell somebody to do something if I haven't did it. So, yes, the red man group. If you ate it, what happened then? <laughs> well, well, so I chewed, I chewed, I kept chewing. I saw if I got small, I just swallowed it, but that's okay. I had some red man group because it, it just didn't, it just didn't really break down. From where from where it was, uh, I don't know if you've ever done oatmeal and like the, like the real natural oatmeal uh, uh, granules, like steel cut. <laughs> I like instant because those those are it'll be easier. The brown rice, if you don't cook it right, it's just super chewy. Kind of reminds me of these. And also, uh, uh, Julia Morton, uh, she is uh, or she was a, a awesome uh, uh, botanist of, of South Florida. Uh, her book. 500 Planks of South Florida, and we actually utilize that when uh, we're identifying, and uh, uh, Janice, our awesome biologist, uh, she uh, displays that book in class, when she's doing that identification class, uh, but she actually talks about, uh, she, uh, uh, I don't think she would do it on the regular, but she attempted to uh, see what other uses she could have for this, so she cut off, uh, she cut off both ends of a, of a dried one, and she smoked this one, she smoked it like a cigar. You know, I did not try that, but um, I don't know, it's kind of interesting some of the different uses you uh, find for plants when you don't have a CVS or watering right next door. <laughs> okay, so we talked about the red with the walking roots and the nice. pointy head. That's usually how I do them. Uh, the black ones, uh, they'll have the uh, snorkel. Uh, root system and those oh, some really cool. Well, so so last uh, so let's see, I'm giving a tour and it's probably like my first or second tour. And I just started and made about it from uh, well, I've been at the parks for about two years now. And somebody told me, hey, black mangroves have salt on the back of their leaves. And I thought, oh, that's pretty cool. So I lit one of the black mangroves, to, you know, because that's what you do. And I said, oh man, that's so cool because it tastes like a really salty uh, paper, uh, <laughs> it tastes like really salty. So then on my first tour, I'm walking around with people and I say, hey, let's, you know, let's give it a try. I say, hey, do y'all want to lick the back of a, uh, of a, uh, of a leader, you know, to see if it's uh, really salty? But so I didn't know the time, but if it rained the day before, that washes all the salt off the leaf. Before they were the couple, they came out licking my teeth. So they came on the kayak, they're looking pretty tired. And uh, we, we went out looking like 20 leaves. I, mean, I made the promise. You know, I'm not, you know, so we, we licked every leaf. There was a lick. And then 
question is again. Um, they were so used to that. Well, you really had to solve. We couldn't take them. No, no, we couldn't find it. And um, that's what I learned. So, uh, so for this one, if you're on the island, make sure it didn't rain the day before. Um, <laughs> the thing probably can't find any. Uh, but if it didn't rain, uh, these black mangroves they actually uh, intake salt water into their root system, and they excrete the salt through the back of their leaves. So. If you are on the island and you're like, man, my food has been tasting very, very plain, and you get a what mangrove leaf, you, you crinkle it up on your food, and you'll have a nice uh, salty flavor there. So, Chris, yes, ma'am. Is the mangrove leaf in fact edible? Or oh, for the black mangrove, the seed is not. Don't even deny it. It's the seed poison. Okay. Mm, let, me, let me rephrase that. So, uh, the the seed is. Uh, toxic to humans. Okay. Now, the leaves, I don't know. Because, I mean, with how much salt they have, it, it's just like a potato chip. But uh, I'm not sure about that. But great. Okay. There are white mangroves. Uh, those are usually, uh, those are usually found a little bit more on the actual land, uh, but it still can take quite a bit of salt water and uh, uh, dilatation uh, on the roots. So I guess I maybe take a back. So the reason why I'm starting with these, we want to know where to build our shelter on the island. And we want to know what land we can purchase in Florida. I don't know, maybe a little bit of a uh, kind of far apart. But if you, I'm sorry from the temp area. Uh, if uh, you are looking to buy land and your, your land has wet, uh, uh, wetlands on it, that's going to be a very difficult process to go through. If you need, if you want to do any building on that land, uh, so uh, very similar to should I buy that land? Should I build my shelter there? Because you build your shelter in a place that uh, the tide will ri uh, rise to and get your stuff all wet. That won't be very helpful. So that's why we're starting with our mangroves here. Uh, just give a little bit of it. So uh, jump back in the white mangrove. Uh, the white mangrove. It, uh, we have a little bit of a. Uh, example here. So if the black uh, excretes out the back and the red mangrove doesn't take salt water into the uh, into the plant, it filters out at the roots. Uh, but white will actually take uh, salt water in and then it'll excrete, ooh, it'll excrete the uh, salt through the uh, nodules on the leaves. Uh, these are actually the uh, nectar nodules on the base of the root. Uh, but that's how you can ID if it's a uh, white mangrove. Just by there'll be two uh, little little holes, like we say, uh, white white screwed on tight, like um, Frankenstein. Again, little bolts in his. Uh, oh, oh. Hey Terry. Hey Ricky. Uh, hello Chris. <laughs> yeah. Hello everybody. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> We've got some seats up here if you want to squeeze in. <laughs> and then we have our buttonwood. Uh, some people consider it uh, a mangrove. Uh, it's not, not really, but it can take quite a bit of a, a salt water. Uh, uh, so I would encourage not to build your shelter for the uh, buttonwood either. Uh, buttonwood gets its name. Well, there's a few theories of how buttonwood gets its name. Uh, one of the ones I really like, and we're going to run with today, is it looks like old fashioned buttons. So, yeah, no, no one's here from the 1600s or anything. Um, so, uh, if y'all can kind of see, uh, these are some very round buttons, and uh, if you can't, if for people at home can't see, you can imagine very round buttons. Uh, they look very similar to the uh, uh, the fruit. I don't know if I don't know if this is edible. It's very hard to kind of press these. I don't. I, I did not try it. Uh, but yeah, it's very. Uh, uh, they're round, just like the fruit of the uh, buttonwood. So that's why uh, one theory is how they got their name, and. Uh, we're, we're saying, uh, do not plant your shelter where there's mangroves. I've got a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, snorkeling in my canal. Yes. Uh, we've got a lot, got a lot of, uh, uh, Dove Creek, uh, got a lot of uh, red mangrove. Okay. And I noticed that uh, the roots underwater, uh, they seem to be putting out, uh, it's kind of like sawdust like texture. Okay. Uh, and it would, uh, it would cling to my uh, the bow of my boat too, you know. Like, what, what, what did it have color to it? Is it uh, pollen or, mm -hmm. or or what? Oh, 
tree today uh, because the mahogany can't take salt water on the roofs. So if you build your shelter by a nice big mahogany tree, you're probably safe from uh, uh, from salt water uh, evaporation. So uh, you, you'll be able to have your fire, you'll be able to keep your stuff nice and dry, and uh, you still burn mosquitoes, but at least you won't have to worry about getting too wet. Now, I, I guess this is concerning. You might worry about a uh, mahogany pod landing on you. Uh, have y'all seen some of these out there? Okay. My now, dog like, my dog likes some. Oh, your dog likes some. <laughs> oh, that's pretty fun. Looks like a, a ball kind of a shape. Uh, this is actually the uh, seed pod of the mahogany. Now, how many of uh, uh, y'all usually see them like whole on the ground? Or, oh, so we see them in parks. Maybe similar to here. Uh, this is a fun, this is a fun one. Uh, so, so they'll break up into five different parts, and uh, uh, they'll usually be on the ground in uh, their parks. You know, kind of like this. And uh, um, yeah, it's in, inside before. No. So since I'm gonna have to clean up later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, uh, very similar to, um, I'm sorry, guys, I won't bring up. Uh, so, very, very similar to uh, maple leaves. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Uh, so, yeah, so instead of using, um, I can't think of the word now, but yeah, then even the glitter. Helicopters. Helicopters. Yeah, I think those are pretty fun. So, so, if you have a party outside and you don't want to throw a uh, confetti, just get up here. Okay. So you can build there a mahogany tree uh, for our wood. wood. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's why we have the mahogany now. Now this kind of idea. Uh, poison wood, if you put your, if you put your uh, structure or your shelter under there, you probably will be safe from uh, getting wet. Uh, however, if it does rain that night, uh, just uh, just the rainwater going through the leaves, the canopy of the poison wood can actually cause reactions. Uh, do y'all see those black splotches on there? Uh, those are actually uh, when the toxic sap is exposed to air, it oxidizes to that black color. Uh, so you'll see it. You'll see it on the uh, bark. You'll see it on the leaves. Uh, so, like I said, the rain comes down. I get it. And just collecting that black uh, on it, it can actually cause reactions. So, yeah, you close your shelter. No, not close your shelter. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, I have a label for everybody at home. Okay. So now we know where to build our shelter. Uh, now we're hungry. And uh, I put these on the same page for. Do y'all know what kind you know this one is? Seagrate. Yeah. yeah. I like Seagrate. Oh, that's one of the ones that we'll be able to try later. So we got some, some Seagrate jelly. Uh, not wildly, uh, wildly picked. And pretty cool. You want to take a picture if you want to impress your friend later. Got it from Etsy. Uh, so, <laughs> so, uh, so I asked my man, I asked my ass Lou, uh, Lou, I asked Lou Dawson, I said, hey, I have a museum. I can do the presentation museum, all these different berries and make my own homemade jam and jelly lemon beer. And she said, can't yeah, do that. And I said, why? And she said, I think you can. Now, <laughs> anywho, I might, you know, so I said, okay. And I said, if I can find them commercially produced, they can feed the people. And she was like, yeah. <laughs> so I started tiny low and it was pretty hard to find some of these uh, uh, items. 
I did find three today. People will try to do a C grape. We have our C grape. Uh, so uh, along with the C grape. Now, if you've been to the awesome art uh, exhibit edge of the, uh, mm -hmm. is that right? That's right. Okay. They also use it for beautiful canvas. They uh, they did quite a bit of a, a drawing on here, some painting on here. So you know, they use some if you, if you want to. Okay, and they used to send them, uh, they used to make letters here. Uh, you put a stamp here. Uh, you'd have your address there, and you could send the mail through a, uh, uh, do a little postcard. I don't know if they still do it, um, but I was not able to prove it. But, uh, I thought it was pretty neat. Do you know how to do it? Yes. I use them as a plate one. So oh, pretty cool. Yeah, we can use them as a plate. Uh, Oh, I've heard uh, bandage use, and um, yeah, they're just kind of. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> the mosquitoes. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, it looks pretty cool. So along with a secret, uh, same uh, genus, uh, different species. Uh, do y'all know what we have here? <laughs> oh man, <laughs> Terry, Terry, <laughs> so good in all of these. Uh, man, what's your secret? Uh, I'm talking to him. Oh, Terry came to our park and he had an awesome tour experience and he was interested in learning some of our native plants. So we made his tour very native plant and had ID. So if you come out to the parks, we can do that for you as well. So, yes, it is a pigeon plum and I actually picked some for today. They're kind of neat. Um, so, so very similar to uh, uh, sea grape. Uh, very, uh, and well, I say very similar. Look somewhat similar. It'll be in, a, uh, but they don't take. They take really kind of a, a, a anti astringent. I don't know you like your. Uh, have a real almost bitter flavor then, uh, but they are edible. So if you're if you're very hungry. You could have the uh, uh, pigeon plum. You're doing a great job selling. Oh man! Well, <laughs> yeah. Some some of the stuff, like I said, it's edible. But when I eat it, oh, I would. But well, and when I get it to my guest, no, I wouldn't. Um, some but, of those are yellow, and some of those are, are uh, purple, aren't they? Yeah. Well, so uh, she, she made a good point. Uh, some of the green ones I hear, them have that yellowish kind of look to them as well. Uh, those are onions. So. For the pigeon plum, especially, go for the root. Well, out, out of the Everglades, they seem to be the yellow ones. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure about that. Yeah, that's, trail. that's good. Let's go plant up some exploring up there. Are they in, in fruit all the time? Are they in fruit all the time? At a certain time of year. Uh, it's, it's the, uh, uh, that's awesome. So they're they're way more fruity. <laughs> uh, they're way more available. Uh, uh, at least uh, the uh, pigeon plum in winter. Uh, now, the sea grape, um, I, I think the animal sea grape a lot. So, uh, more difficult time. I think I've seen a few in which it'll be more fall, um, early, early fall. I said summer as well. I, okay. Like, uh, I picked these off the tree yesterday. So, uh, pigeon plum is. Uh, fruit in, in, in uh, 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 fruiting right now. And if you kind of look, uh, that pigeon plant, it almost has a similar look to the poison wood tree. So, what do you do? The island, you can't tell if it's poison wood or, or pigeon plum. Well, <laughs> so, 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 uh, uh <laughs> I mean that. I, I usually when I say you know, uh, uh, do you know if you're allergic or not to poison wood? There's only one way, one, one way to find out. But and that's one way. But uh, if you're not sure, just go to something else because <laughs> <laughs> because uh, you know you don't want to maybe risk it. Uh, but if you come on a tour, I uh, you'll see the pigeon plum usually have a whole bunch of scratch marks indicating that uh, raccoons, iguanas, big rats. Right. Uh, Say it again. 
<laughs> well, I, I haven't saw too many bears around, but I'm sure there were. Uh, 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 bears would uh, enjoy the pigeon plum as well. So that's teacher how I identify the pigeon plum versus the walk uh, by the leaves. Um, okay, so we got, we got, now we're gonna have some other fruits. So these are a little bit, well, this might not be too bad. What do we have? A lot of coffee. Are those eatable? They're edible, but are they eatable? They're pretty musky. Um, but uh, down, let's see, uh, down in South America. So, so for a while there, uh, the celebrities, uh, they were going down South America and they were having the shaman experience and they were being rebirth, reborn. Uh, what, was, what was the drug? Uh, not the drug. What was the drug? Ayahuasca. 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 Uh, so, you know, there's, there's different, um, I think it was a, 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 a hallucinogenic experience. And um, uh, the reason why I bring this up in relation to our wild coffee plant, let's see, so same genus, there was a, a, a not a species, but same genus, so be family, uh, uh, genus, species. Uh, there was a, 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 a very similar uh, looking plant, uh, same genus, that was put into the ayahuasca drink. And, uh, you know, it was probably the experience. So I've had guests ask, if I eat enough of these berries, uh, will I hallucinate? And I said, I, I don't know, but please don't try it on park property. <laughs> um, uh, but but on a more serious note, uh, part of that experience, there's there's the hallucinogenic part, but there's also a I think expelling uh, of different um, maybe they're an expelling both ends and uh, uh, one plant <laughs> one plant that they put in that they put in that mixture caused that. So I said, well, it might make it might make you hallucinate, but also might clean you as yeah. well. But, uh, uh, but yes, but you, but you can't eat them. They're not very good, very kind of musky, kind of like sweaty to me tasting. I mean, I didn't have 20 to see if I hallucinated, but I did have a couple because the birds really like these. So I have this up here in the food section uh, because uh, they're really good for attracting songbirds. So if you're on an island and you're real, real, you know, real sad shape, uh, you can try to make a snare maybe to catch a bird that's feeding off this, but do not do that here because we really love our birds and we don't want to hurt anyone. <laughs> Now, next to the wild coffee, uh, what do we, uh, what do we have here? False mastic. Man, this guy, this guy's good. Whoever talked, um, yes, <laughs> false mastic. We have some in person. Have some in person. Let's see. Have y'all? So, have y'all saw the mask, the uh, false mask around before? We don't have a kind of yellowish. Uh, when they're ripe, they'll be a little more orangish. No, okay. I'm a, I thought I'm a YouTube channel before, but I can't hear you. Uh, so, uh, usually when they have that red tip at the end, that's my favorite one to eat. Its nickname is the. Um, um, it, it's, it's nickname is the. Um, uh, what would you say? What'd you say, Liz? Don't eat it. What? Okay. I, I, I eat a whole bunch, and, and I'm fine. Um, <laughs> So, no, okay, but no, they're, they're really, really sticky. Uh, so, um, they actually call them the, uh, the, the mother in law fruit because if you eat enough of them, supposedly they'll, you know, snap your mouth closed. But we love our mother in law, and, and I'm not calling that. Uh, and and, I, and I, think, I think most have had it once, like 10, uh, and it didn't cause my mouth to stick shut. They, it tried, but I have power through. Uh, <laughs> but what it did do, it's so sticky. It actually got this yellow all over my teeth. So I'm all thinking if I take key, I have a tour coming up and the yellow all over my teeth. <laughs> so I don't give it a tour. And I know they're thinking like, man, this guy lives on the island. He's never left the key. He's never left the key. He's never brought his teeth before. No, <laughs> but other than that, it's pretty tasty. Um, and, they, and they smell delightful. Um, but yeah, we'll that. If you eat, okay, eat too many of them, it does cause the burning around the mouth. But other than that little item, uh, I think they're fine. Uh, but like I said earlier, uh, make sure you ask a parent, guardian, a doctor, before you do anything that I'm uh, 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 talking about today. Yeah, question. you spell the name? Okay, I can. Uh, so uh, sometimes when you're using common names, uh, it can be, you know, the different common names used. Uh, we call it uh, the false 
uh, F-A-L-S-E, uh, false, uh, mastic, like the glue, like the sticky stuff, uh, mastic, M-A-S-T-I-C. Uh, so there's different names used for, for different plants. And uh, if you are curious about any of the scientific names, to make sure we're talking about the, the same plant, uh, you can give me your email and we can, uh, I can email you my uh, uh, list. Because, because uh, like I said, we talk about common names, uh, different people call it things, they have different, I've, I've tried, there's been a lot of different uh, uses of different names. So yeah, the, the best way is make sure you have a scientific name. Can you pass it around? You said it smells Yeah, lovely. I can. Yeah. The starvation is looking really good right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So if you want to, if you want to, you know, uh, if, you want, if you want to touch them or if you want to touch them, you can. Um, if, if the person you handed to does not want to touch it, go to the next person. So yeah, so that's, that's the kitchen plum over there, uh, and that's the uh, false max going around. So Terry, I actually did. I, so, so Terry, I did bring something special for you. We haven't tried yet, but but we'll. we'll Okay. Did I mention how wonderful the tours are? <laughs> so, okay. What do we have here? Right. Oh, okay. I'm hearing a whole bunch of different ones. I like it. We're getting involved in it. Now, I, I, usually, I usually refer to it as the prickly pear uh, cactus. Now, oh, I'll be trivia time. Okay. Oh, I didn't. I have stickers that I can give, but uh, I don't know about with so trivia. What country flag has prickly pear on it? Mexico. Yeah. Really? Mexico. That's what I'm talking about. That was how they found that their city. Yeah. Man, man, I, I, I'm not paying you guys, but they're good. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, the uh, 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 the the Mexican uh, the Mexican uh, uh, flag it has a uh, has a prickly pear with an eagle standing on top of it and um, they actually have uh, two what two cities made more but they have two very big cities uh, that are actually named after the prickly pear because it is uh, a very big part of their uh, culture and of their uh, economic system. Speaking of. What does a prickly pear look like? Uh, and now, uh, so it's okay. Okay, so somebody did say these are pretty big, and I will have to, I have to confess, I got these stuff of that sheet too. Well, we, have, we have them around, but gosh, I've got ever tried to eat one of these in the, in the wild or anything. They have these terrible, they have these terrible little hairs. <laughs> They're so prickly, and I thought they were prickly. Okay, so. So the same couple. Hey, be sure to just show the people on Zoom oh, what you're holding. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget the one. So, so that's one way. And um, so the same people that I took around and I made them, I made them lick so many different leaves because we're gonna find the salt on the back of the back. <laughs> this, you know, I said, hey, I said, hey, uh, we're gonna look, we're gonna check out one of these. Uh, uh, we're gonna check out one of these. Uh, pretty good bears. Now that one is a little messy, so um, it's not any messiness on the outside yet. But if you do have, I said flash them, oh, so no, we don't want to touch it. Uh, but the uh, prickly pear, they have these really fine hairs. Uh, I thought when they said prickles, uh, I thought they meant the the, uh, the spikes on the actual cactus itself. So, so I can't even imagine those little prickles right there. So I'm eat, I'm eating one, and you know I, I'm just going in. I'm like, oh man, this, this is the only thing on the island that's decent. So you know all this other stuff. Eh, Edible, but the prickly pear. I'm not going my way to eat some, so I'm eating it all over, you know. But later, no, wait, okay, three minutes later, I'm like, man, all right, this stuff is kind of hurting. So, so I, you know, around my mouth, and, and, and not to make fun of any animals because you know we love it. But have you ever saw a dog with the, the, the porcupine? Yeah. And I look like you know all over my face and my tongue. I'm like, oh no, what am I going to do? So you can actually get them out very similarly to how you get fiberglass out. You can you can dry the area real well, um, and then you get duct tape so on the tongue. It did hurt pretty good. So you dry it real well. You get duct tape and you rip them out. Um, and make sure you don't have lip skin. You like 
because that naked we talk to. Uh, but but we learned a very valuable lesson. Um, the only good thing on the island you can't eat because of the danger. Uh, however, I was given a tour. They were a local family, and I said, "Man, you know, I was showing, give them a little tour on living right here." I said, "Man, I really like these right here, but you can't eat them because of how dangerous they are." And they said, "Well, let's get rid of the prickles." And I said, "I tried, uh, but not I tried to give it away." And then my wife said, "He bought them." Burn them. And I said, Burn them first. I said, I said, you're people of the genius. So you take this, you take the torch around the edges and you burn off the fine hairs, then you can eat the prickly pear. So make sure you have your flammable torch with you in your survival situation because the, the, those things are hard to get off. Okay. I really used to use a knife and a fork. A knife and a fork. So that's probably the real, that's the real way to do it. But I, I still couldn't get them all. I couldn't get them all, and the, the pain wasn't worth it. Uh, but, but that is a great, that is a great point. The, 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 the real way, the correct way to do it is a, a, a fork and knife. Okay. So we have our pickle pear. Well, what's the other one we have next year? Oh, bye. Ooh. Question. Yes, ma'am. In the supermarket, I sometimes see these these uh, prickly pear pear pads. Okay. People must eat them. But how do you eat them? How are you? How? So yes, they do eat the pads of the prickly pear. Um, they usually, I think, they go for the younger pads, and those will do a little more tender. Um, I haven't had them raw before, and I I've had them cooked. Uh, I didn't necessarily like them cooked. I think it was I think they boiled them, and um, so this one. I'm stuck a little bit outside, uh, but uh, I think they boil. Uh, I've had them boiled, and I've had them like I think boiled within like in the oven. Uh, I didn't necessarily like them, um, but yes, uh, people do eat them. And there's certain places I think the United States that's very popular, like um, our prickly pears. Uh, they have a uh, a different species out in uh, Texas and Arizona, and I think you can actually see them at the market uh, there, like pretty caught really commonly. Here I don't see prickly pear uh, too much in our in our grocery stores. And then, yes, yeah, an awesome question. So, the, I think the young lady said it back there the papaya. So, the papaya. Oh, Janice, I'm sorry. So, our biologist, you know, she, she, the, the, the papaya was found, you know, we're talking about the nativeness of the plant. So, the papaya was found in the Kista Circle in Miami. I think it's like, I think it was like a 4,000 year old circle. And it's still being con con uh, contended if it's a true native. Or if it was a, a brought to this area by uh, humans, and uh, uh, so uh, at this time the Florida State Park System does recognize it as a native plant, and uh, uh, not necessarily the, the huge ones you'll see at the grocery store, but the ones on uh, our plants around. They'll usually be a little bit smaller. Uh, this is the unripe one. Uh, have y'all had the pie before? Yeah, so yeah. you said real? Yeah, it, it is. It's pretty unripe. But they don't. I mean, I've had. Uh, Joanne, what do you think? Do they get the ones on your tree to get about that big? Um, oh, bigger, yeah. Yeah, so they get a little bigger and they'll have that yellowish kind of color. Mm -hmm. uh, the seeds, they're kind of peppery. There we go, papaya. Uh, unripe papaya, don't even this one. <laughs> uh, but uh, it'll have a, uh, 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 it'll be a little more yellow by the seeds. Uh, I've, I've, I've tried the seeds before. Uh, they're very peppery to me. Um, I imagine you can maybe crush them up and use them as kind of like a seasoning for something, but I didn't really like them by themselves. I think they're supposed to be pretty nutritious. Um, and, and then the uh, uh, the actual flesh itself, I've had luck if you get a little uh, key lime. So make sure you bring key lime onto your island and you put that in, you mix it up, and it almost kind of has like a uh, salsa. You know, I, I, well, it kind of doesn't taste like uh, tomato salsa, but it has like that salsa kind of uh, vibe to it. And, it's good on good. fish. Okay, it's good on fish. But even for me, I have to be pretty happy. I didn't really like the polish. Not having to be pretty hungry to try to buy it. But the prickly pear, I would eat that normal. But yeah, so those are two different food sources out there on the island that you're likely to come across. You think you're going to Woo! Sorry about that. It's going to be. Okay. Okay. So now we talked about some different. Uh, we talked about some different food sources. So now we're going to move on to 
uh, some different tools we can use on the island. So what do we have here? Torchwood. Torchwood. <laughs> now, so here, if you want, let's get people here today. <laughs> so if you want, um, you go ahead and reach in the bag if you'd like and you grab one of the leaves of the, of the torchwood. I uh, had to make sure it wasn't the poison would leave back. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, as you're going, as you're going around, I want you to look up. Okay, uh, I, I hope everybody brought the reading glasses, but uh, I want you to look up. I didn't bring mine. I bring mine, but uh, it'll it'll look like uh, that picture right there when you're holding it up. And let's see. Uh, those are oil sacks in the leaf of the porchwood. And um, uh, you can actually crush it up and you'll crush uh, you'll crush those uh, oil sacks and you can give a smell. Okay. So it'll be that picture up there and uh, we're crushing up the, uh, uh, the leaf right now. And I want you to smell, I want you to kind of tell me, what does it smell like? Good. Good. Oh, it smells good. So some people like, um, some people like skunks. Um, <laughs> so I never smoked skunk. But the way it smells. So for people at home, we've we've had some skunk comments. We've had citrus. We've had beautiful smell. I kind of like it. Um, uh, so the reason why I bring this up, it's the uh, the resin is quite flammable. And they actually, uh, uh, they actually used to get uh, a piece of a branch when it was still green. Uh, they split it in the end, and they could actually use that to do a little night fishing uh, as a uh, torch. And uh, yeah, torch would. So, so I was actually talking to Terry, and I, because I, I wanted to make a video of me starting a fire with it. And then you know, so I'm I'm sitting there, you know, three or four hours to sweat, to so much sweat dripping off into my pile that, and then I realized I have to make a fire. So. It didn't matter what I tried to use, I but, but I had a water bottle and I, and I was trying to get sunlight through it. And it did smoke pretty good, but I, I tear you, I'll take your class on the fire making. But uh, uh, if you have a lighter on your island and you put in the wood, you can just start the uh, torch right up. Or magnifying glass. Well, uh, they sell those in the gift shop. Well, <laughs> so we, got, we got our torch wood and then. What do we have next to the torchwood? What is the white? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's fair. Uh, it, it is the plant they make tequila out of. I, I don't think necessarily the species that they use, uh, but yeah, it's an agave. So usually when I'm walking through the hammock, so, so this one is a non-native one. Uh, we have a native one uh, here as well. Um, but uh, why am I talking about the agave as a tool? <laughs> because on agave, you can make a uh, rope out of it. Yes. So if I can ask everybody to kind of quiet down a little bit, just so we can uh, make sure we hear everything's going on for everybody around you. Um, so this is a, a twine or rope of the agave, and uh, uh, it, it was competing with uh, uh, with a uh, hip at one point. Uh, they talked about. Uh, some of the, some of the uh, proprietors of uh, Indian key talked about turning uh, a lignavida key into a agave farm, but they didn't. Thank goodness. But yeah, uh, that's kind of the now. It's very hard to get to this this spot here, uh, but if you take a uh, just a, a raw leaf and you uh, you can get it into a somewhat formable uh, twine like, but it takes a little bit of time to actually dry it out and work with it. And if you're it's not a bad reaction to poison wood, but if you are allergic to the agave uh, green, I think the green of the, uh, uh, it can cause reaction as well. So I guess I should throw that in there. But uh, yeah, it's pretty, I don't know, it's, it's the, uh, pretty the, the guave stalk attracts birds, especially woodpeckers. You see that? The, uh, out there in India Key, it attracts iguanas. So you'll see quite a few iguanas actually laying out in the sun up on top of an agave plant. I'm sorry, Chris, I've got a question. What you got? So I know some of the, I know you said there's a number of species and mm -hmm. subspecies. Are the, some of them have hard points on the Oh, yeah. So 
Is it like a needle in the, if you separate it out, there'll be at least a couple of fibers that you can use kind of like a needle and thread? Man, these well. guys are awesome. So restate the question for that. Yes. So uh, Terry asked, hey, those really uh, sharp looking uh, points on the agave plant, if I break one off, uh, will it have a point that I can use as a needle with a couple, a little bit of twine so I can tie something up? To or fix something that needs a little uh, has a tear in it. Uh, yes, you can. Your finger closed after you cut it open. Oh man, I can't imagine how tough you are to be able to do that. But yes, I, I'd imagine you could. Uh, the idea of using it as a uh, suture, uh, you can stitch up a cut. I have not tried that. I kind of want to, but <laughs> but but uh, uh, but yeah. So so uh, just add on that that uh, uh, the first question. So the uh, uh, Seminoles up in the Everglades, they would actually uh, uh, fire harden the point a little bit more and uh, would use it as a needle to uh, patch up uh, different tears in their clothing. Chris, is the tall picture the gloss, the bloom, the fruit? Yeah. Yeah, so the, the, it, that is a stalk that comes out of the agave and when those fall off, they do create a new, um, so those are the flowers right there. Uh, I would imagine that's one way to uh, phrase it, but I, I don't 100% know if that would be the, the correct term. But yes, uh, these are the baby plants that fall off, and you can see there's a whole bunch of them. And even uh, if you are doing removal of agave because it poked you, and uh, or it's an invasive species, you want it gone, uh, you have to actually remove the whole plant uh, because just the leaf can regrow again. Oh, so now we have. A favorite of the keys, Kabalumba. Now, let's see. Uh, uh, okay, trivia times. I uh, like trivia. So, where does Gumbalimbo get its name from? I knew what it was. Uh oh. Okay. R Ranger Mary has a theory for us. Yes. Limbo has sticky sap. Okay. And it may have been used on the branches to put some sticky material mm -hmm. and then have birds stick to it and land on it. You're saying they would use it to catch birds? A gummy limb from hmm. It's, I don't know. So, Dr. Uh, 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 Daniel Austin, he was a U.S. professor. He agreed with Mary's uh, uh, description of. Uh, there, there were, uh, let's see, so uh, there were quite a few, uh, it's a gumbo limbo. It has a very similar name to a slave bird line. That's how it kind of roughly translates. But yes, uh, they would put it on the, uh, brain. well, they would get the, uh, they would get the sap and they would uh, burn it down or, or they boil it down to get a little more condensed and get it real nice and sticky, put it on the branch. And then when the birds came, um, a lot of bird, well, every bird I can think of top of my head, uh, it has muscles that close or can grip the branch, but they don't have muscles that let them let go. And uh, when they go to fly away, they'll just uh, they'll just uh, not grip the branch and then they'll try to get away. But if there is a sticky bird uh, bird lime or, or, or uh, glue like substance, uh, they will have difficulty getting away. Uh, and you can have a little bird snap. Uh, however, uh, that is uh, uh, I think it's uh, yeah, it's it's illegal. It's, it's illegal and to do that, and uh, it, I mean it's non uh, it's non selective or uh, so any any uh, bird that lands on it you could harm. Uh, so maybe in a really serious survival situation, that may have consequences. You know you need to eat, but uh, the idea of just doing it for fun, uh, you know. Uh, and then we have. Uh, I got a comment. Oh, what you got to go on? I read that you can make a uh, a tea out of the bark. And use that uh, as kind of an antidote to the poison wood. I like it. <laughs> so I'm going to pay for this one tomorrow. But yes, sorry. Uh, yes, there is some evidence that the leaves uh, were utilized to make a remedy of uh, to the poison wood. Now, it, it, there's not an overall consensus of this yet, and I have not personally tested this out. Uh, but yes, there were cultures. Uh, that did uh, do that to help treat the uh, poison wood. Uh, I have not tried it yet because when I get poison wood, I want something that's going to work really fast and really good, and I do go to CVS to get the tech new. 
Um, but yes, there's some evidence of that. Great question. I want to ask a question. Uh, yes, ma'am. We live on in a house that has a gumbo with a tree in the front. And the first day that we were here, like it was must have been late January. January. It was like the last day of January. I went out and the tree was covered with bird. Oh. And there were these little bugs, and I pulled on a branch to see what it was that they were eating, and there were little bugs all over the tree. Mm -hmm. And they were little birds. Mm -hmm. They weren't, um, they were little, they, you know, they were like, I don't have to make but yeah. No, I, I couldn't okay. identify because I couldn't get near them. Because as soon as I came up, it all pulled away. Well, what, what's your question on this one? I want to know what the answer is. Well, no, too. Uh, so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to write down her email for me. And um, so we have two coming for y'all. Oh, perfect! Perfect. It was just really interesting because there wasn't a bird eating anything else in the whole world. So this young lady said, "What in the world are these little bugs that are on gumbo limbo that the birds eat?" And yeah. we don't know yet, but we're gonna research it. Thank you. Okay. So, any more to gumbo them before we uh, head to our next plan here? No, yes, one more shot. Um, I think I heard a rumor that uh, it something about it looking like the skin of a tourist after. A oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so we, you know, I make fun of our tourists um, uh, because of that peeling red. I, in some circles, if you walk around and you look like a tourist, they will. Uh, that is a nickname of, of the gumbo limbo trees. Tourist tree? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, another tree we have here is Jamaica dogwood. Are y'all familiar with what we're going to utilize the Jamaica dogwood for? Fish funnel. Fish funnel? What the heck is that? So, uh, some of the early uh, peoples and the uh, some of our uh, uh, native uh, ancestors, uh, they utilized the Jamaica dogwood. Uh, they crush up the leaves, some of the bark, and they, I'd imagine maybe a little bit slower moving than uh, big parts of the ocean, but they uh, used it, uh, I think, uh, uh, rotenin, uh, uh, the same active chemical in uh, dog tobacco. Um, say it again? Rotenone. Rotenone. Thank you. Uh, so they uh, crush it up, they throw it into the water, and it would uh, uh, cause the fish to raise up. And um, uh, we, we actually had a guy from uh, North Carolina. I'm giving a tour to him, and he tells me that uh, in one of his survival classes up in North Carolina, I'm not the same, uh, I'm not the same uh, plant, but I think I have the same active chemical in it. Uh, they dammed a, a small stream with rocks. They go to the very top of that stream, and uh, they put... Uh, that was a uh, uh, very similar planet, and it did cause the fish to become uh, temporary paralyzed so they could uh, go along and uh, collect. Uh, but along with, so I guess a better phrase, uh, that is uh, uh, illegal to do now. Uh, so don't give me an idea. Uh, and then along with funneling the fish, uh, the fishermen would actually uh, use it to get funneled themselves. Oh, now, uh, <laughs> So, so I haven't tried this one either. Um, but actually, I, I did have a, a group of a group of, of these spring breakers, and you know, we, we, uh, I, I, and we 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 did, we did the uh, we we did the torchwood leaf, and I said, "Hey, what does it smell like?" And they said, "Mojitos." I mean, the whole group smelled like mojitos. So I, I, I don't even know. I, I don't know what it really was there, but it really just smelled like mojitos that day. Uh, but then uh, the next stop was our Jamaican dog one night, and I shared with them that. Uh, uh, it is. It was used for insomnia and pain relief effect. And you can actually get a vial of extract from Etsy too. Uh, but I, but I think the uh, that chemical, the the rotenin, rotenin, They done some studies, and that might not be the best for humans. <laughs> um, uh, but we do a lot of these aren't good for us. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, these kids. You know, I tell them about it. I see one of the kids packing leaves in a, and 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 she can't smoke it. I said, oh no. Uh, and another one, I said, not on park property, and uh, <laughs> and I hope you know they didn't try anything crazy. Uh, but yeah, that was uh, I was utilized for um, just pain relief and 
uh, a different effect in a, in a T form uh, for humans as well. Okay. Uh, are there any uh, questions before we uh, get in the, uh, if you're interested in the uh, tasting portion of the evening? What, okay. it, what, what do they have in the environment, like if we don't want to get eaten up by mosquitoes? Oh, oh man. Good question. Okay. Um, you might want to tell the folks at home. Yeah, so this young lady asks, uh, I'm on my island, you know, I, I'm surviving, I'm thriving, but these mosquitoes, uh, there's something out of a nightmare. Uh, you come to Lake Navite during the summer, you'll get a little taste of them. <laughs> you know, uh, it's one of the ones where I hope your will of survival is stronger than those mosquitoes because I don't have anything for you. Um, they're going to eat you alive and, you know, get on the, you know, you know, sleep in the water. I don't know what to tell you, uh, but, but no, they're absolutely terrible. Um, and that's one of the ones. So, so that's a great question. What are these mosquitoes? And in the keys, how do I get fresh water? Uh, those are two really hard questions to answer. And um, hopefully a gallon of water washed up with you with the bug spray. <laughs> because, um, well, you know, uh, you either going to catch rainwater or, or the mosquitoes are going to so bad. Uh, but there is one really cool thing about our mosquitoes down here, uh, the salt marsh. Uh, they don't carry diseases. Uh, they don't carry diseases like the freshwater ones do. Uh, so even if they are eating you alive, you know, for anybody, any, any, any uh, West Nile or any, uh, yeah, so they don't worry about that. So, yeah, yeah, the NBA, so, I mean, that was a great question. Uh, uh, so there's been, there's some entries into the workers uh, on the overseas, uh, uh, overseas rails. This is quite a bit, of, uh, quite a bit of time ago. Uh, they talk about how um, they put their, uh, they went, well, uh, so these are the workers. So uh, this is probably an uh, uh, entry from 1910. And he talks about how some mornings uh, the workers would wake up early and they'd try to find some food or they'd try to find fresh meat. And, you know, you read a little blog and it says, uh, because the mosquitoes go for the tender flesh, uh, humans were all, uh, I've, seen some, I've seen some pretty hairy guys, but most of us are, are pretty tender all over. Um, so the mosquitoes can get anywhere. But for raccoons, they go for the nostrils. Uh, so there's the entry that says uh, there'd be, the, the mosquitoes would be so thick that the raccoon would actually suffocate because high mosquitoes were in there. Uh, so that's just maybe the answer question. I, I don't have anything for you. Um, um, uh, uh, but, but, but some of the some of the workers did discuss that they'd have a fire going, like a smoky, a real smoky fire with with, with, with coconut husk. And uh, I, I've heard some of the different uh, things you can try, but oof, that'd be rough. But great question. Anything else, guys? Hmm. Okay. Guys at home, it's gonna be a little hard to taste some of these, uh, but you can imagine along. So I have a question. Yes. Uh, you mentioned there's all these uh, uh, mosquitoes that are in the water. Yes. Uh, do they have any uh, blends with uh, fruits? Yes. How good can it be if people start all eating them and instead of the birds? Oh, great question. So, <laughs> so uh, uh, Joanne asked, oh, well, a concern of like. Uh, you know, I'm telling everybody about these wonderful plants you because we want to make sure we save some for the birds and uh, for the other animals. But it's one it's to answer that question directly. I'm very confident you won't be able to, they don't taste very good. Uh, there's a lot of things that taste better. Uh, now, for some of the very rare plants, I, I don't think I discussed any of those. Um, but if, if uh, so, I'm not too concerned that people are going to go out. And, but to address that question in another light, if you're in a national park or you're in a state park and you want to do some foraging or gathering, um, you, you need to get permission of that uh, park ranger or person on duty because a lot of parks do not allow that unless it's actually a closed course. So no, that was a great question. So don't, don't go to your local park and go crazy on uh, what's around. And these are survival tactics. These are survival tactics that you should not do unless your parent, guardian, doctor approve. Or he went on a three-hour tour. Well, <laughs> <laughs> perfect. What do you got? I have two comments for you. Uh, one is I've been there to win the key, and it's amazing. Wow! It sounds like they went on your tour. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad. Uh, this other comment is unripe papaya can be cooked like squash or grated raw like coleslaw. Oh, is that oh, true? Yeah. So we have a comment of. Uh, uh, 
So, so I, I write papaya. There, there's an enzyme in it that makes my throw up to me. I, I don't know if y'all have ever eaten unripe papaya, uh, but there is uh, maybe like, I think maybe like cilantro, there's certain people can't eat cilantro. So maybe it's just a me thing, um, but they said you can do a little grating with it. I want to try that out. Um, in the Thai restaurants, they do make a salad. Really? With green papaya. Yeah. Interesting. Well, it's the same kind of thing, you know. Yeah. Okay. Give that one a try. I appreciate y'all sharing that. Papaya is a great meat tenderizer, too. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard it, it, it was uh, utilizing meat tenderizer. Oh, fair, good one. Oh, story about mosquitoes. Uh oh. Okay, well, we got we got a story about mosquitoes. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, this one's from Sally. She uh, was asking about the stopper tree. Oh, Sally. Um, <laughs> so we do have we do have a tree. It's a uh, it's sort of difficult to identify. Uh, um, but yes, when you come to win the key, I can show you what they utilize when uh, uh, you're having a little bit of uh, a trouble. Hmm. When you have a little trouble cleaning, uh, what, what, cleaning out, or, or you're going to the bathroom a little bit too much, and uh, uh, you know if you never see CVS, you get your anti-stomach uh, ache medicine. You can go to the stopper tree, and they say you can make a tea out of it. Uh, I haven't made a tea out of the, uh, the stopper tree yet, uh, uh, but I have eaten the fruit. The Simpson stopper? Or what uh, we we let's see, up in I think Northern Cuban. We don't have any sense and stopper uh, native. Uh, uh, sense stopper is not native to uh, our parks in Almorada. Um, but yes, the same uh, same family. Uh, we have red stopper, we have Spanish stopper, we have white stopper. And uh, yes, uh, it was utilized as a, uh, a, a, a anti diarrhea medicine. And I guess the stopper stopped you on the cork. <laughs> <laughs> but no, great question. Was that the bark or the leaves? Uh, so I, uh, I have not tried this one yet, but from my understanding, it was a tea made from the uh, uh, leaves. Anything else, sir? Okay. You want to yes, you want to share your story? A little story about mosquito. Okay. In 1960, I had a friend that lived on Lower Meadow Company, and he built a little shed, a little tiny shed with a screen door on the front of mm -hmm. it. And so he said I could I could stay there overnight. So he said, make sure you get in there before dark. Okay. So I got in there before dark. Okay, so he gets in, he gets in the, 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 the small shed before dark. Yeah. And when it got dark, I tried to look out. I couldn't see out. You couldn't see out of the screen. The sheetest, the sheetest were solid on that screen. Wow. wow. So, so that was 1960s and lower map. Yeah. Uh, he stayed overnight in a screened-in area, and you were safe from the mosquitoes. Yeah. So he was safe from the mosquitoes, but he couldn't see out because of how thick they were. So maybe that's an idea. And then build a screen uh, porch on the island. Later on, he was sleeping, and suddenly there was a terrific roar past, right past the. Uh, oh, there was a roar. A, a mosquito struck spring, spring mosquito. Uh, 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 there was no more mosquitoes and the gas just billowed in. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Man, well, I, I, I'm glad you brought that encounter. And also, we that was when <laughs> well, we appreciate you sharing that with us. Very cool. Thank you, sir. So, are we going to, we're wrapping up our uh, presentation. Yeah. Are we going to, for those who want to stay? Yeah. Thing? Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> we, do have, we do have a, a, a sample available. I think we'll set it up. Hmm. Should we set up on that table? We can set it up up oh, here. We'll, we'll make it up, up here. Huh? Um, so anyway, I want to thank you yeah. for being here. So if anybody has any questions, you can come up and share stories. If you're online, thank you for attending. And again, put questions in the chat. If we don't get it to it tonight, we'll respond to it once it gets posted. And if you have any other questions, just come to our park and you can ask them there. So then is there a website that is associated with your parks? Yes, there is. Florida State Park. Oh, I'm good. Okay. FloridaStatePark.com. Oh, thank you.
uh, floridastateparks.org. And uh, it'll be Lignavite Key, Indian Key, and Winley Key. If you search those on that website, you'll find us. So as a thank you, oh. we're giving, we um, give our speakers a one-year membership. Um, every day that we're open and take a little look around. Uh, we are closed three days a week. So thank you again. Thank you for attending. If you did get a chance to sign in, we, we do keep track of all of our headcounts. So if you didn't get a chance because the paper was full, I have another one up here. So um, please put that put your information on that. We'll be back again on the third Wednesday of next month for our talk on crocodile. So thank you very much. We're thank gonna you. stop recording now and uh, we appreciate you. Of course. Oh,